Carmera is a street intelligence company. Uh, we focus on high definition maps for autonomous vehicles. Almost all autonomous vehicle programs rely really heavily on these next generation maps because they act almost like virtual rails for the vehicle to be able to follow when it's asking itself the questions that all of these, uh, these AV brains, as they're called, ask. So the where am I question, the what's around me question, and the where do I go next, the maps have become an integral part of, the, of answering those at the reliability required. So the, the maps you and I may have on our phone, those are what we refer to as standard definition maps or human navigation maps, uh, and they're wonderful, but we make maps for machines, for the robots, basically. And so those types of maps need to be much more detailed, 3D, much more accurate, uh, have to have a lot of features in them that quite frankly wouldn't be as useful for a human, but the, the machines really need to know about to, to navigate safely. It takes a process, and in our case, we actually use a two-part process. Uh, we employ LiDAR technology and also other types of equipment to create uh, base maps, kind of a, an initial uh, you know, foundation, which again, have lots of granularity, lots of accuracy, three dimensions, but what's pretty novel about us is the, one of the hardest things, if not the hardest thing about this technology is how to keep these maps updated and maintained uh, when things change. And you know, we're, we're actually one of the only AV companies based in New York City. One of the reasons we are based here is because it's a really good test bed for very difficult conditions where lots of things change all the time and you have bad weather and you have tall buildings and bad GPS. And so uh, that change management, one of the ways we do that is we deploy uh, sensors on delivery fleet vehicles that are operating in the cities that we operate, you know, that we deploy in. In fact, if we stood here long enough, you'd probably see one drive right by us. Um, these are you know, package delivery, storage companies, maintenance vehicles. And uh, since they already have a lot of vehicles on the road, um, we're able to sort of crowdsource data that keeps track of when things are changing so that it's an efficient way to keep these high definition maps up to date. So the real arrival autonomous driving, the, the biggest challenge in that question is uh, what, how, how would you define that? So, you know, the, the frustrating answer, but the real answer is it's both already here and it's also decades away. <laughs> and I think the, the reason for that is because you're seeing right now, what you're seeing are two parallel paths you're seeing uh, what's called level two, level three automation, uh, you know, things like Tesla Autopilots, Cadillac Supercruise, um, and basically that technology is more sort of partial automation to more really uh, driver assistance. Um, and that follows the old business model of selling privately owned vehicles, and we're very involved in that because they also, most of them use high definition maps. But then in parallel, you're seeing you know, what most would consider fully autonomous, like for example, a robotaxi like Voyage, but constrained to geofenced environments uh, where, you know, the needs are highest and also the technical challenge is most uh, approachable. And so basically our prediction, what we're, what we're seeing from our customers is those two things are moving nicely in parallel, but soon will, at some point will converge where uh, the technology will allow for almost any road type uh, to be suitable for, uh, you know, almost fully autonomous driving and, um, you know, for the basically the business models also to converge because you have one where it's more selling vehicles to consumers, one is more selling, you know, fares essentially to taxi riders. But I think generally democratizing this technology, uh, right, is, is very much what we're interested in. And that, that can mean a lot of things. That means all those different types of um, areas to be able to deploy in, different business models, um, making it accessible to the, those most in need, like senior citizens, for example, or the mobility, the, the underserved uh, in terms of mobility.